What's up you guys? My name is Justin. Welcome to my channel. 502 Fragrance Reviews. Five fragrances that I think are underrated. Nice underrated spring fragrances that you should check out. Let's hop into these five. So the first fragrance I want to talk to you guys about, and I don't own any of these five, but that doesn't mean that I can't recommend these fragrances because I think these fragrances are nice. Come from the house of Prada, and this is Prada's Lunarosa Sport. Now, you could definitely say that Prada Lunarosa Sport is clearly inspired by Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mail, which is right here. In addition, you know, it's Prada here, but the this fragrance right here, which I do own, Le Mail, is definitely some similarities between this and the Prada Lunarosa Sport. It's almost like you strip down the sweetness a little bit and the spiciness of that, and then you got Prada Lunarosa Sport. But I will say this, even though I don't own it, I've heard from other people in their wearing experiences, they have gotten a lot of compliments on this fragrance. Lavender is one of the main notes. In addition, you've also got tonka bean. You've also got some ginger in here as well. It's a, it's a nice aromatic, fresh fragrance with a touch of different sweetness in here. This one, I think is one that, even though I don't own it, like I said, I actually have tried this fragrance on a few times, and at least on my skin, it's got average to above average performance. To me, it's not super long lasting like John John Paul as like Mal is, but I think it's one where you will wear this and you will definitely stand out because you will smell different from everybody else. Typically, whereas kind of the more popular mainstream fragrances, this fragrance right here isn't popular, super popular mainstream, but it's one that deserves you to at least check out. So don't blind by it, just smell it one day. And that's Prada and Rosa's Sport. Let me know in the comment section below, what are some underrated spring fragrances that you guys think people should check out more? The next fragrance I'm gonna talk to you guys about comes from the house of Giorgio Armani, and this is actually a newer fragrance that came out last year, I believe. This is Armani's Aqua de Joe Absolute Instinct. Now, this could be great for the spring and summertime. I know Dallas from Chaos Fragrances really enjoys this fragrance and like, and I agree with him. This fragrance to me is one that's grown on me over time and it's one that I think is still underrated. People aren't really looking at it too much because they're like, oh, just another Aqua de Joe type flanker. But this one right here features prominent notes of seaweed, still got the marine accord and patchouli and ebony wood. The seaweed in here gives it a really nice twist. It's definitely got that sea like sea air like smell. If you don't like fragrances, it's basically more so around the sea. Like, it's like got that marine notes of cord where you don't like the aqua de Joe DNA, that core fresh sea, sa sea salt to DNA. You probably won't like this, but I think this is a nice twist on it. I mean, this is a flanker of a flanker. This is a flanker to the original aqua de Joe Absolute. And honestly, I might think this is better than the Aqua Drop Saloon. Like, really, this one's one that I don't know if I'll pick this up because there's other marine fragrances I got that's just on my list ahead of it. But it's got a little bit of a bitterness to it from the seaweed. But that ebony wood and seaweed combo, I think, is really dope. And it gives you a different type of marine type of freshness out there, especially when it comes to designer fragrances that's out in department stores. There's not anything else that smells like this in department stores. So definitely check out Armani's Aqua de Joe Absolute Instinct, an underrated spring fragrance that can also work really well in the summertime. This third fragrance I'm gonna talk to you guys next about, I actually am probably gonna pick this fragrance up. I do like this quite a bit. This comes once again from the house of Armani, Giorgio Armani, but this time we're gonna go to the Armani Code collection. This is Armani Code Colonia. Now this takes the Armani Code DNA kind of takes it a little bit in, the, in a blue fragrance direction, but not full on like Ambroxan or Amberwood Overload. Like, don't get me wrong, you got Amberwood in here. In addition to the Tonka Bean, which is a core note to the Armonico DNA. This is all about Bergamot, Amberwood, and Tonka Bean. But this is one right here. I mean, one of my coworkers, she says that her boyfriend wears this fragrance and he gets comments all the time. But that's just what the Armani Code DNA does. It's very mass appealing, especially if you make it a fresher version of it, like Armani Code Colonia. This has got some similarities as far as like the vibe, the problem Rosa Sport gives is where it's, it's an aromatic fragrance. It's an aromatic freshy with a little bit of touch of sweetness. That's what this is as well. The Armani Code DNA is proven to be a winner. 
Now, Armani Code Colonia doesn't have the super great performance like Armani Code Absolute or Armani Code Profumo does, but it's still respectable and it's one that you can wear year round, but especially works well in the springtime. And it gets overlooked by the other flankers in the Armani Code collection. So definitely check out Armani Code Colonia, a nice underrated spring fragrance. The fourth fragrance I'm gonna show you guys, well, no, the third, no, the fourth one, yeah, is an underrated fragrance from a Chanel. You know, typically when it comes to Chanel, Blue de Chanel gets all the spotlight, which I mean, deservedly so. It's a groundbreaking fragrance at the time it was. It's very great. And even Chanel's Lorome Sport gets a lot of attention. But let me talk to you guys about a fragrance that typically us fragrance enthusiasts know more about, but it's still underrated. This is Chanel's Platinum Ego East. Now, this one is probably gonna lean more towards the older crowd. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Uh, I don't think people my age or people like really young, like teenagers will like this fragrance at all. They may think it smells like old man, but this to me is a refined gentleman smell. Definitely more upscale. I think me personally, I mean, I, I'm, I wear fragrances however I want, but I could see a younger person that maybe worth more so wear it for special occasions and an older guy, an older gentleman, he would wear it every single day as a signature scent. But regardless, this is an aromatic barbershop, aromatic fougere fragrance with main notes of lavender. You got some citruses, you got some geranium, but it's all about the lavender. If you like lavender, I've already named two fragrances in here so far that's really nice with lavender. Prada Luminosa Sport, which is the first one I covered, and then Chanel's Platinum Ego East. It's got above average performance. It'll work really good in the spring and summertime, but you could wear this year round if you want to. It's definitely got more of an upscale vibe to me. But regardless though, it's definitely underrated because typically when you think Chanel, you immediately think Blue de Chanel. But there's other fragrances that's great in the Chanel brand, like Chanel's Platinum Mega Weast. So whenever you get a chance, check out Chanel's Platinum Mega Weast, a very underrated spring fragrance that's very solid. And the fifth fragrance I want to talk to you guys about, this one right here, I'm kind of teetering back and forth if I should get it or not because I do like this fragrance. And this one right here was made by a really talented perfumer in Francis Kirkjohn. This one comes in the house of Burberry, and this is, to me, the best Burberry fragrance. This is Mr. Burberry Indigo. Now, this fragrance right here is, it's definitely aromatic. It's got a little bit of a fresh quality to it. This is all about mint. I really enjoy mint in fragrances now. And this is all about mint. It's all about rosemary, watery notes. It's got average to above average performance, but it's a nice, unique, fresh fragrance that kind of goes, goes away from a typical citrus fresh fragrance. This is going on along lines of a green freshness from mint, from rosemary, and some other notes in there too. You got like a woody undertone, a woody base to it, like cedarwood. But this one to me, especially for the price point with this one, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below where you can check out all these fragrances best place to get it for the best price this one right here is a really good value at the price I think it's like around 30 something bucks for a 100 ml size bottle if you want to do 100 ml it's got a really good price value and it's one that I think will work really well in the springtime even summertime as well actually you can even wear this year round as a nice everyday scent a nice everyday fresh fragrance that's different from, like I said your typical citrus based fragrances and that's Mr. Burberry's Indigo Definitely check that one out. Francis Kirk John did a really good job with this fragrance right here from the House of Burberry. Like I said, that's all I got for you guys today, man. Doing some kind of quicker videos. Let me know in the comment section below. Like I said, what are some spring fragrances that you got or you kind of maybe smell or maybe you don't own that you think, you know what? This is actually a really underrated fragrance that people don't really talk about like that. Let me know in the comment section below. You know, I'll talk to y'all in the comments. If you're interested, if you haven't already, if you like my content, subscribe to my channel because I got a lot of great more content planned. That's all I got for you guys today, man. Hope you have a nice day, nice evening. Till next time.